The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Helena, Montana, on your new apparatus, job number 29827. Please utilize this job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment or Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting in the bumper just underneath, this is going to be an air horn located on the left and right hand side. You also have two center mounted electronic sirens. Moving up on to the uh, bumper itself, there are two latches to gain access inside. We'll talk about that in a moment. Moving up to the cab, you are a left and right turn signal. Moving just inside that on the light head cluster, the outer light is your low beam, the inner light is the high beam. Moving up from that location, you have a emergency or warning light. Moving all the way up to the very top of the windshield on the brow, there are running lights across the top. You also have a full width light bar. Just inside uh, the front of this section, you're going to have a forward facing fixed floodlight. And inside the light bar is the location of your Opticom. Let's go back underneath and take a look at the underside of the truck. This is going to be your front closed tow hook. There are one on each side. Another view from underneath. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ends of the uh, bumper, or I should say side. And you can see that there is a uh, netting here that allows access to an inch and a half front discharge port. You have access on both the passenger and driver's side. To access the hose from on top, uh, simply turn those two latches on the top at the same time. Lift. This compartment is loaded with uh, air shocks and it will remain in the open position until closed. As you can see all the way on the driver's side, this is your inch and a half discharge port. Generalized view with that section closed. As we move up onto the very top, let's take a look at the left turn signal. This is going to be the center of your apparatus, the Pierce logo. This is also location to access for opening the hood in the front. Once the hood has been opened, gains access into some components with inside. We'll talk about those components here next. Starting on the passenger side, this is going to be the fill location for your windshield wiper. Moving to the opposite side or driver's side, this is the location for fill of your coolant. Moving all the way to the very far right hand side, this is the location of your power steering fluid. And you can see the yellow handle and red rocker switch. That is the activation for your cab tilt. There are also instructions just up on the firewall. Let's now move all the way to the very top section of the cab. This is going to be a couple of short images here of, uh, or length images, of your forward facing fixed floodlight. Just up from that you can see just inside the light bar, this is the location of your Opticom. Generalized side view of the apparatus. As you can see, lo uh, located down at the very bottom by the front step on both right and left hand side, this is going to be a front warning light in addition with a reflector just above that. You have uh, mirrors on both right and left hand side, the very top being convex and the bottom section being flat. This is your department logo.
we'll take a look at the driver's side. You have two pull handles that are keyed for the doors in addition with a grab handle in the center and on the outside edge of the rear section. You also have TAC4 suspension. This is the location of your shore inlet, which is a 20 amp, in addition with your auto eject air plug. At the very top of the cab, this is gonna be a top floodlight. Looking down at the tire, these are your Goodyear tires, G289s, WHA. Looking in the center section of that at the hub, this is gonna be your hub seal location, and this is a Stemco. You can also see the fluid level inside. Generalized view looking from the back section, looking forward. We're now gonna look at the uh, telescoping light uh, just to the rear of the cab. As you can see, the telescoping light now is in the upright position or extended position. This is manually done by turning the quarter, uh, the knob, the tightening knob, and then lifting. As you can see on the very top of the uh, light, you have a camera. Another generalized uh, image here of just the side pump panel and some of the compartments, but we'll take a quick look at that uh, knob for moving the light. As you can see, the uh, knob just located under the last location where it's mounted on the bumper, that's the twist knob which allows you to move the uh, uh, light up and down. Looking inside, this is the upper section of the compartment. You can see there are two cross lays located in this side just behind the diamond plate door. In the lower section, you have a webbed section which accesses the two skid loads for cross lays. As you can see, the latch in the middle, this is to uh, remove those skid loads. Simply raise the latch up, depresses the uh, mechanism and allows those to be slid in the outward position. This is a demonstration of them just being pulled out slightly. That latch has, latch has been dis, di, displaced and allows them to move outward. We're now gonna start taking a look at the uh, pump panel, uh, which is the lower section here on the left side, uh, which uh, we'll talk a little bit about here in the next few set of slides. Starting in the upper left-hand corner on the body, you have a work light. Starting in the upper left-hand corner of the pump panel, this is gonna be a discharge colored in red. This is your large diameter intake. Moving to the upper right-hand side, this is the auxiliary foam inlet. Moving down to the very bottom, you can see that all discharges are color-coded with the referencing uh, lever in addition with the discharge port. This is a two and a half inch discharge. This is gonna be your drain valve. Moving over to the right-hand side, your auxiliary intake or two and a half inch intake. Moving down to the very bottom, you can see that there are color-coded discharge drains associated with each one of the discharge ports. This is your pump drain and your auxiliary drain, which is for the two and a half inch inlet. Let's look at some close-ups of those images here shortly. This is the foam uh, inlet and strainer is located with inside that and it's also utilized as a drain. As you can see in the very bottom here, the number one red discharge at the very top is your drain, and the two, three, or three across the bottom are all drains also. Moving over to the right-hand side, this is that two and a half inch driver side auxiliary inlet. Looking at a general section of the uh, rear section of the cab, or the body rather, and we'll talk a little bit about the components within the pump in addition with the compartment. Once this door has been moved to the open position, this will gain access to the pump panel in addition with storage on the right hand side. Let's talk a little bit about more of those components and we'll start talking about uh, those individually also. Let's start in the upper left hand corner. You can see that you have a uh, monitor for viewing of those cameras. Also at the very top, you have uh, a pump light. As you can see at the very top section, there is a black label that says pump light. Once that pump light is in the on or lit it indicates that your pump has been properly engaged. Once again, these are just generalized views so you can get an association as to where they're located. We'll break those down individually also. Located on the far left, this is going to be the monitor for monitoring those cameras. Moving over to the very center section, this is going to be your panel gauge heater. 
and moving to the upper right hand corner or right hand side. This is going to be your master intake and master discharge. This is a close up of that rear vision camera, which also includes the two uh, lights on the side. Moving across the pump panel, this is going to be your panel gauge heater. This is automatic and uh, senses the cold and will turn on automatically those heaters. Moving over to the right hand side, this is going to be your master intake in addition with your master discharge. As you can see in the very center, there are two ports, a vacuum and a pressure. These are the test gauge ports. Moving over to the very far right hand side, you can see this is the PCM fault. This is an amber light. Just beneath that, there is going to be an audible alarm. This is the speaker for that alarm and it is adjustable as far as adjusting uh, the sound level by simply turning that device right or left to close the individual holes. Starting in the upper left hand corner of the pump panel, we're going to have uh, all of the discharges across us here. You can see every one of these discharges has the ability to provide foam. They are all independently col color coded depending on the discharge port that you're uh, actively looking for. At the very left is your front discharge. In yellow is the number one, number two. Looking across as we look uh, in the very center, this is your real discharge. And as we look at the very sides, once again, there are two additional discharge ports in this area. And at the very far right hand side, this is going to be your Pierce throttle operation. We'll talk a little bit about more on that throttle operation here in the next few slides. Looking at the two other outside uh, levers, these are going to be the driver and rear discharge and the passenger rear discharge. In addition with the Pierce uh, throttle, as you can see, it has a water tank level in the blue section. There is also a pressure control and an RPM gauge, which lights up also for activation. Moving all the way to the very far front section of the cab, this is going to be your uh, monitoring operation station for your TFT monitor. Moving just down from that section, there'll be a bank of switches. This is going to be the driver scene, passenger scene. This is what turns on and off your cameras, and it also uh, has an air horn located at the very bottom section. And as you can see, nothing labeled the two switches below. Those are for future switches locations. Looking at the generalized pump panel in the next section down, you can see you have your tank fill and recirculating line. Moving over, you have your tank to pump. There's a placard just above that. We'll talk a little bit about that placard now. This is your Pierce placard for minimum operation maintenance schedule. This has the job number located at the upper left-hand corner, and it also has all of the pump pressures in addition with RPMs and at very bottom, a govern speed at 2,400 RPMs. Let's talk a little bit about those levers just below. There is your tank fill and recirculating line on the left hand side. Turn the knob to the right to lock. Same thing with the tank to pump. Moving over just to the right hand side, you'll see this is the uh, foam tank level indicator, foam A, and you can see at the very bottom empty and it will light full at the top. In addition with your foam, uh, Pierce foam operational center here. Moving just to the right hand side, this is going to be your fire main prime for the uh, fire pump. Let's go ahead and move uh, just down from this location you're going to see uh, two automatic valves. One is for your large diameter passenger side discharge. The other is going to be for the number two passenger side discharge. Once the uh, apparatus is in the on position, these uh, will illuminate. This is going to be your deluge discharge. And you can see there are also foam instructions. This is the placard for those. This is for the Husky Foam 12. And as we move just to the uh, upper section of this, this is just a generalized view of what the uh, components are in this area. Once again, your uh, primer for the fire pump and on the very right hand, right hand side is your deluge discharge. Let's take a look at the very bottom section of this pump panel, just uh, at the very bottom section of the roll up door. Uh, as you look on the left hand side, there's also a warning label. Uh, moving up from there, you have a variety of different uh, discharge uh, drains and lever drains in addition with an access panel. Let's take a look at those uh, knobs uh, in the very section of the pump panel. First you have your reel discharge, you have a reel blowdown in addition with a primer drain and a flush valve drain. Let's look at the levers down at the very bottom section here. Starting at the very far left, this is going to be your number one crosslay, number two crosslay, 
driver rear discharge, passenger rear discharge, the manifold drain, uh, in addition with a foam drain. Let's look just slightly above the last lever on the very right behind this access panel. Uh, this is going to be the location where you'll access to uh, get behind the panel for visual inspection, but more importantly, this is going to be the location for your foam fill. As we have a slide of that here next, as you can see, this is going to be the lever to access your foam uh, for horizontal and fill operations. Uh, once again, um, just read the placard on the left-hand side and that will give you the information as to the location of how the valve should remain once it's been utilized and restored. This is going to be your manual pump shift override. You can see the right-hand side has an amber light. The switch is protected by the uh, red cover plate. Simply activate, uh, move that uh, switch cover and activate the switch. Let's take a look at the right-hand side just next to the pump panel. As you can see, you have an adjustable, uh, a correction, a fixed shelf in this location. This is going to be just some generalized pictures of the side of the rear section of the body. And uh, from there, we'll uh, go ahead and start looking at the individual components within side those compartments. I would like to notice just in front of the rear tire, this is a marker light. As we look uh, in front and to the rear of the apparatus tire, just above that on the body, you'll find this is a location for bottle storage. As you can see, the black straps, those are to ensure that when uh, the vehicle is in operation, in case items have shift, uh, none of those items will fall out once that door is in the opened position or left open. At the very top in the blue, this is your DEF fill location. And at the very bottom, uh, this is going to be your uh, diesel fill location. So once again, blue for DEF and the one down at the very bottom here, this is going to be the uh, ultra low sulfur diesel fill location also. Let's go ahead and move to the center compartment. As you can see, the center compartment, when the door has been accessed, it gains access inside to a pull-out swinging tool pegboard. As you can see, when it's in the open position fully, the uh, actual uh, panel will lock. To unlock that, all you have to do is lift the lever here that's in gray. Once that lever is locked, it will then allow you to move the uh, panel back into its normal position. We're now looking at the rear compartment. We're still on the driver's side. Once you look at the rear compartment, you can see at the very top, there are two adjustable shelves. Moving down to the very bottom section where you can see the box is located, this is gonna be a full pullout shelf. To activate that pullout shelf on the right-hand side, there is a black lever. Push down on that lever will allow it to then pull all the way to the outward position. To restore that, push the lever, slide it back in. Underneath the rear section near the rear duals. This is the location of a folding wheel chalk. Generalized view, there is also that wheel chalk in the front of the tire and to the rear. Let's take a look now at the very back of the apparatus. Looking at the back of the apparatus underneath from the bottom section, you can see there are perimeter lights in addition with uh, looks like backup lights. And in the very center, you can see that there is a fixed mounting point or tow hitch. Moving up from that location onto the very top, you can see the work lights to illuminate the uh, deck. We'll go ahead and get started on a few of these components here. And I have some close-ups of each and every one of those components there to talk about. As we look at the light cluster on the right and left, at the very bottom is going to be a reverse. Next up, turn and then brake. As you can see to the very left, you have a, uh, or just inside of the uh, tail light cluster, this is going to be a warning light. Just up from that location of the warning light, this is going to be where your license plate is uh, attached and there is illumination for that. Moving up from that location, this is going to be your hose bed lights. This is a momentary switch. Simply push to the up and it will activate the lights. Looking all the way up to the very top of the uh, hose bed, you can see you have movable center dividers. There are two located currently in addition with LED lights. These are going to be rear scene lights.
Taking a look at the uh, left hand side of the apparatus, you can see there are two compartments that have uh, latches. These allow that once that latch is in the open position to gain access inside, this is going to be your ladder storage location. This is a 14 foot and a 24 foot. Moving up from that, this is going to be your 10 foot attic in addition with long working pool uh, poles uh, or tools in that location like a pike pole. Looking at the door within the closed position, as we actively uh, lift the door by uh, lifting the silver handle, allowing it to roll up, you can see inside you have an adjustable shelf in the center. You also have right and left LED lights for illumination. Looking at the very top, you'll see you have a traffic advisor just above the Pierce logo. And just also above the traffic advisor, you can see there are three marker lights and above that a reverse backup camera. On each side, right and left hand side, you can see two discharge ports. This is going to be the very top section of your hose bed. There is a center mounted uh, hand grip or handle in this location. You can see it more a little bit visibly here. Looking at the far right hand side, you can see there are some compartments in addition with a slide down or pull out ladder. We'll talk a little bit about that mechanism also. Uh, be cautious with the ladder, it is a pinch possibility. Um, but to activate this, go ahead and depress the levers. Once the lever has been depressed, this allows it to move in the outward position uh, to extend away slightly from the bumper so that you can gain access to ground level. Once it's in the ground uh, extended position, you can go ahead and access the next set of latches which will allow the ladder to actually slide into the downward position. Once it's uh, slid to the downward position, then it is operational for uh, someone to climb on. Here's an image of that with it in the downward position and extended outward position. Uh, looking up at the very top of that section where the ladder attaches to the rear, there's going to be some compartments here that have covers on them. Uh, behind those, uh, as you can see, this is going to be a long storage compartment. Uh, here's the door with it open. Uh, just to the opposite or just above that, um, this is going to be your access point uh, to climb once you're on the top of the ladder. Uh, this will be your step area that you can climb in. There is also in that step area an additional compartment that opens just beneath the uh, work light. Uh, this is two locations here for hoses. At the very top section you have a closed hose bed hard cover in addition with two latches to gain access to open that cover and handles on both the front and rear of it. On each side, left and right, you have a warning device at the very back. You can see the forward uh, or aft latches in addition with uh, storage on both right and left side uh, with compartment uh, within those areas. As you can see, uh, this is lumination from the very bottom section of your cover. These are the components on the left and right hand side, individual storage compartments. I also have some image of those here shortly. And there is also lumination within those individual compartments. That's gonna be the uh, passenger side. And then we'll go ahead and move over. This is the uh, driver's side. And we're going to go ahead and look to the very center. Located in the far left hand side of this is the black uh, tank which has uh, water fill and on the right hand side is your foam tank fill for class A. This latch uh, is locked. The other tank does not have a latch um, and is intended for that for filling so that the water latch can be then moved in the up moved upward if it fills the tank. Generally looking forward this is going to be your foam pump hydraulic fill location. Uh, there is a cap on the very top on the opposite side there is a visual gauge and you can see it there in this image now. This is once again just hydraulic oil. Looking at the uh, general center mount of the apparatus this is going to be your master stream device. This is also a uh, electric master stream device, can be controlled uh, once again at the pump panel or at the very top. This is your one inch uh, hose reel or booster line. 
Uh, as you can see also at the very right hand side, there's an adjustment knob and also a uh, location in case you need to manually crank that. Generalized view of the rear of the apparatus. Let's take a look at the right hand compartment in the very rear section. As you can see, there are three shelves. Two at the top are adjustable. The one at the very bottom is a pullout shelf. Let's take a look at the right-hand side of the same compartment. Once again, illumination. Also, this is an adjustable vertical shelf with pegboard. Can be pulled in the outward position. This is the uh, vertical shelf pulled out for tool storage and tool mounting. You can see it in its full extended position. Once again, full-size image of the apparatus. We're going to talk a little bit about those individual compartments just as we did the last one. We're now looking at the center compartment. The center compartment has a roll-up door. Inside that roll-up door you will find your shelf which is uh, one adjustable uh, but more importantly there are two black uh, levers on the outside of that shelf. Simply depress the levers toward one another uh, by moving this lever to the right and the opposite side to the left. This will allow the locking mechanism to freely open this compartment. Uh, cautious if there are heavy things because this compartment will pull out and then tilt in the downward position to gain tool access. Looking at the right hand side of the vehicle once again or passenger side, you have two locations for bottle storage in addition with bottle straps. Located between the two compartments here, there is also a mid warning light, meaning mounted midship. At the very bottom of this picture, you can see the uh, marker light, and just beneath that marker light, this is going to be your uh, warning uh, sticker regarding the exhaust and not to park near anything that could be flammable because that exhaust could heat that and cause uh, vegetation or any other type of objects uh, to catch fire. Looking just underneath from this exhaust location, you're going to find your uh, automatic tire chains. Generalized picture, this is going to be the, uh, once again, passenger side. We're going to move to that very front compartment, large. But let's first look just up above. This is going to be your access point for that uh, red line, booster line, one inch uh, line. Looking into this compartment, you have two adjustable shelves with the bottom shelf or third shelf. Uh, it's going to be a pullout shelf. There are also some straps, which you have some pre-designated uh, needs here. Let's move just forward of this compartment. Uh, you can see at the very top the uh, diamond plate uh, angled or slanted compartment. Once that compartment is opened or accessed, we're going to talk about uh, some of those uh, options behind that. This is going to be your cross lay location. It's both accessible from the right side and the left side. As you can see, there's a center mount divider in this compartment. Let's move just beneath that location. We're now looking at the uh, mesh. This is going to be the location of those cross lays uh, that are uh, push the latch to actually allow it to be uh, the actual entire unit to be slid out and uh, loaded. Let's move just beneath that section here. This is going to be your passenger side pump panel. Um, let's start in the upper left hand corner. In the upper left hand corner, this is the push button for the activation of rolling the hose, the red line or real line back up. And just to the right of that, uh, this is going to be your uh, strainer. Uh, as we move further to the right hand side, you can see in the upper left hand corner here, this is going to be your large diameter intake. And as we move to the right in orange, that's a passenger side two and a half inch. And this is going to be your large diameter passenger side discharge. As you can see, there are two overrides. Uh, these overrides are uh, because you have chosen an electric valve. 
if you have failure with that valve, these are the overrides to gain access for opening and closing those independent valves. Looking at the lower section, you have a water strainer drain and then a, a variety of different drains across the bottom for each one of those uh, discharges. Generalized view of the uh, right hand side, we're going to look to the very top. As you can see on the very top, this is a floodlight facing toward the uh, passenger side. And let's look down at the steps. Uh, here at the next set of images, you can see just in front of the step, this is a reflector in addition with a warning light near the front bumper. We're now looking from the uh, outside in of the cab, and uh, you can see that you have two uh, steps on the both front and rear of the front tire. There are work lights that illuminate when the doors are in the open position. And let's now take a look from the driver's side. You can also see the work lights, step lights, and also perimeter lights at the very bottom. Moving to the front door of the driver's seat. Left hand side of this, you'll see there's a bank of stickers and warning labels here. Please pay close attention to those warning labels. As you can see, when your vehicle is plugged into shore power, this is the uh, voltage indicator to give you an idea how much voltage you have going to the apparatus. There's a close up of those warning labels. In addition, within the driver's side, you have four uh, electronic switches for window control. Moving up from the uh, warning labels, this is going to be your latch. In the center of that latch is your door lock. As you can see, those are labeled by passenger side, driver side, front and rear. Let's now look at the seat for the operator. Uh, as we look at the seat, you can see that all of the seat belts are colored in red. This is for high visibility to ensure that people have their seat belts on. But let's look at the components of that seat. There is some warning labels with on this seat, but underneath the very front of the seat, you'll see these are levers uh, and controls for the operation of the seat itself. Looking down at the uh, location where the operator's feet would be, you're going to find a warning and caution label. But more importantly, what I'd like to just focus in on this next set of slides here is this is your Pierce uh, manufacturer label. This is going to give you the uh, manufacturer date, the job number. It's also going to give you the VIN number and uh, also it's going to give you fluid capacities with the component, the type of fluid, and the uh, amounts. Looking down at the pedals, just to the left of the pedals on the panel here on your left, we'll talk a little bit about that. First at the very bottom, you have an electronic siren foot treadle. This is a pedal to activate your electronic siren. Moving up from that location, this would be about the left side of the driver's knee. Um, this is going to be your components for, uh, one, your command zone at the very top. In the green, this is going to be a port for the engine and ABS diagnostic and a diagnostic port for the SRS transmission. Below that are the coinciding switches and at the very bottom of the regen uh, information for inhibit or regen. This is your quarter turn main battery switch. Moving up from this location on the left, you have the ignition switch. Just up from that is your momentary start switch. And just up at the very top, these are your flashers or warning hazard lights. Moving just inside onto the panel itself, you'll find the very small switch. It says EM. This is the emergency master switch. Moving over, this is going to be your headlights. First click is going to be for your running. Next will be your headlights at the full top. And to the right of that, this is the panorockle switch which allows dimming of the uh, dash lights. Uh, looking at the uh, left and right turn signal here. Just beneath the left and right turn, uh, at the very bottom section, the small where the keys are hanging from, uh, this is going to be your push uh, for telescopic movement of the steering column and pull for tilting the steering column both forward and backwards. I think I have a close up of that here in the next shot. The next image will be as if you are the operator sitting at the steering wheel looking down at the front uh, panel. 
Uh, this is going to give you just a general or vicinity location of all of the components and then we'll dove into the next set of these components here in the next set of slides. As you can see in the center of this is a custom built uh, for Helena Fire Department. In addition, this is the location of your horn. Let's go ahead and look up to the very top over the operator's head next. We'll start uh, with the left-hand side. You'll see the yellow placard indicating height, length, and gross vehicle. That's as it comes from the manufacturer. Moving over to the next set of panel, you have emergency master, roof, front, side warning, lower warning, uh, upper. This is also the location of your Opticom and air horn. Moving just to the right of that location, this is going to be your high idle. As you can see, the uh, light is illuminated green, which indicating that you may go ahead and engage the switch on your left, which is the high idle switch. Once again, generalized uh, location of where things are located on the uh, dash. As you can see on the left, it's the transmission, DEF, water and oil. On the right, it's going to be your voltage, fuel, and front air. And in the two center is your speedometer and your tachometer. Uh, this is indication when the truck is first turned on in the ignition. You can see the location of the, all of those uh, gauges. They have all moved uh, to just about uh, fully uh, open. Uh, and as you see, when you turn uh, or when it goes through as it checks, it returns itself uh, back to those positions and then goes and back and zeroes them out. Uh, it's part of the engine diagnostic startup location uh, from when you turn the ignition switch on. That is completely normal. It also illuminates all the lights on the dash so that you can uh, visually check to make sure all lights are operational. Uh, this is going to be just beneath the uh, front um, steering wheel. This is uh, on the dash itself. It per, uh, gives you the temperature and miles in addition with uh, additional information within the engine. Looking off to the right hand side, just a general components uh, that you have uh, at the disposal of the operator. Let's go ahead and start with the upper left hand corner of this and we'll start with the uh, brakes. Uh, the uh, yellow uh, square here is going to be pull to apply the system parking brakes, uh, push to release. Moving just right of that location, this is going to be your uh, Pierce command zone. Uh, this will give you information as to uh, engine component information, uh, your seating assignments and seat belts, in addition with uh, the ability to look at the cameras that you have selected within the program. Let's go ahead and move just to the right of that. This is going to be your Allison transmission uh, selector switch. And as you can see at the very top, there is a uh, note that says pump in neutral. As we move over to the next set of gauges, let's look at the very top section here. This is your engine brake for on and off. This is also a choice of either low or high. There are two future locations, the tire chain activation switch and your uh, mirror heat. Moving just down from that, this is going to be your siren. This is also the uh, air horn, electronic air horn, and your radio for PA. take a look at the next uh, set of switches here. Uh, this is going to be uh, the stationary OK to pump and roll indicator. This is your water pump on off and this is your foam pump on off. Moving just above this bank of switches is where you'll find your mirror controls. Uh, you can see select the left or right mirror for the flat, select the right or left for the convex, and then you can push the outer edges to move the independent mirror that you've chosen. Moving to the very center of the dash, on the very front section, this is going to be the location of your climate control. We're now looking at the A pillar in the very front. This is in the driver's seat. This is a hand grip to pull yourself in and out of the cab. Uh, also, just in front of that is the location of your stamp for your VIN number. Let's look overhead now of the operator. 
This is going to be that yellow placard that we talked about earlier regarding this height, length, and GVW. Also just a generalized view of some of the components that are just above and within reach of the driver's head. As you look forward, you'll also see that you have a plexiglass smoked visor on both the right and left side. And just uh, where the smoke visor comes to its stored position, you'll see a reading light that uh, has the ability to intensely focus that light uh, directly down in front of the, uh, the operator. Uh, there's also an additional uh, light similar to this uh, just on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and back up and talk a little bit about uh, those panels overhead for just a quick second. I'd just like to pay close attention on the yellow placard. The height of the vehicle currently as it leaves is 10 feet. The length is 32 feet 7 and uh, 7.34. Your gross vehicle weight is 25 tons. Just underneath that you're going to find uh, you have your job number uh, 29827-01. And as we moved just to the right of this placard, this is where you're going to find the switches that we talked about just briefly a few moments ago but let's cover those in a little bit more in depth. This is your emergency master, which is similar to the one on the uh, steering column or just left of the steering column. You have a roof light, a front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, opticom, and air horn. Moving just right of that location, this is the front driver side, passenger side scenes, rear ground scene, this is the location of the load manager, the siren brake, in addition with a future switch, and the rear scene. Moving just right of that, this is going to be the uh, pump pressure. This gives a digital reach out of the uh, pump. In addition, moving to the right-hand side, this is going to be your water tank level. Moving further to the right-hand side, this is going to be the foam A level. Just underneath that location, this is the uh, location of your wireless firecom system for channels one through five. Let's go ahead and look uh, over to the next section here as we move to the right of that. This is going to be the location of your traffic advisor. Further moving over to the right hand side, uh, this is going to be the location of your seatbelt warning and then you have a uh, storage uh, location just above that. Let's focus on the uh, small light in the very center. Uh, this is a uh, light that indicates that not to move the apparatus because there may be a compartment door in the open position. So if this light is flashing, it's indicating that you have a compartment door uh, that is ajar or open. Moving just over, we didn't talk too much about it, but this is your traffic advisor for the rear. There's uh, yellow LED lights on the very bottom section of this advisor to indicate the type of direction that you're indicating and a on off for low and high power. Moving just to the right of that, this is gonna be your Pierce seatbelt information center. This uh, will display if someone does or does not have a seatbelt on. In addition, if there is weight within that seat of an object, it will display that also. This is a storage location. You'll find these types of lights uh, in the front section of the cab and also in the rear section of the cab. This is a push on off. It's an LED uh, red or white. You choose whichever one you want. Push that type of uh, cover and it will light the color that you push. Uh, we're going to now look to the very rear section of your apparatus and as you can see on the uh, rear section you have a center mounted cabinet and on the right and left hand side there are SCBA seats. Let's talk a little bit about the cabinet that's located in the center. Same type of roll up compartment door that we have on the entire uh, apparatus to access that. Simply pull the lever in front the uh, silver part which allows it to roll. In this compartment there are two adjustable shelves there is also power inside this compartment. Um, this is looking from the outside into the cab. You can see that in the rear section there are two storage compartments on both the right and left hand side. As you can see in the center of the hinge door opener here, uh, this is a red grab handle. allows you to uh, choose to grab this if you choose to get inside. Just another attachment point for you to be able to pull yourself up and in and out of the cab. 
Uh, moving to the very top section, once again, there are the push on and off red and white lights. Looking at the very top, you can see there are rear speakers for the stereo system. In addition, this is the uh, location of your air conditioning in the center. And you have two right and left SCBA seats. And let's take a look at those now. Just forward of the two SCBA seats is where the two compartments are located. Uh, once the door is in the open position, you can see there is illumination with inside, in addition with a adjustable shelf. Also inside this compartment, at the uh, very top section of this shelf and at the bottom, uh, you have uh, shore power connections. This is the shore power on the left hand side. You can see this is a shore line outlet. So this is something you can uh, plug uh, devices into. It is a 20 amp circuit. Just between these two right and left compartments, you're gonna find in the center where the motor is located, uh, this compartment in the center. Uh, once this compartment is opened, this is the access point for checking of fluids for the engine. This is gonna be your transmission check in addition with oil. Looking back uh, from the front of the cab to the rear, this is the uh, passenger side SCBA mounted seat. Just above that seat, uh, you'll see the location for the plug-in for your headset system, in addition with a hook for the Firecom system to hang your headset on it. Just above that, you can see in the black, this is gonna be a stereo speaker. And once again above, push on, push off, red and white lights. Located over the uh, rear section of the driver and the passenger, uh, there is a speaker uh, located for your uh, main radio system. Generalized view from the uh, passenger side rear. Once you access inside the compartment, this is gonna be the inside illuminated lights with inside, in addition with a single adjustable shelf. In that compartment, there is also in the very top section, once again, short inline uh, outlet. It's a 20 amp circuit. Uh, as we move to the very bottom section of this, you'll also see at the bottom, uh, there is an additional plug for shore power also. We're now looking at the front of the passenger seat. Once again, front section. This is a seat that houses an SCBA. As we look underneath this seat, you'll find a storage compartment. Looking from this seat location downward at the feet location, on your left side, this is gonna be a foot pedal for your electronic siren. Also, just to the front of that are two access panels. This is an image of the foot pedal for the electronic siren. Just up from that, you'll see at the very bottom section, access point for electronics. And just up from that, this is gonna be a glove box. And just up from the glove box is a handle. From the passenger seat, looking over at the uh, driver's seat. Uh, Left-hand side, you're going to find two 12-volt access points for power. Moving up just to the front of that on the front section of the uh, cowling here, this is going to be the button for your air horn. And back to that same location, you'll find uh, the vehicle data recorder port. This is the location of the two plugs that are for 12-volt uh, power. Uh, just to the front of that, this is going to be your vehicle data recorder port. 
Let's go ahead and look overhead of the passenger. You'll see once again the push on off red white lights. Also a stereo speaker in the upper left and uh, the yellow uh, hook there is for the attachment point for your uh, headsets. This is going to be an uh, all weather radio. Once again, attachment point for your Firecom head system. Shows a little bit better picture here of the speakers and your air conditioning unit. Uh, just behind that seat, or I should say just to the side of it, this is going to be the location of your Firecom system. This is the passenger side. Generalized view of your apparatus. I would also like to say congratulations on your new apparatus, Helena Fire Department, job number 29827. Congratulations and thank you. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, please contact your salesperson from Hughes Fire Equipment. Thank you.